weekend guys honky tonk that's a very good idea some music and some movies and there's some good news there is a surprise hit in the movie uh, in the movie world playing all over town this weekend it's a seemingly small picture that sat around for a couple of years for various reasons it is called blue sky it is a solidly involving piece of personal drama with a social conscience about nuclear testing as well the uh, heart of blue sky is a volatile marriage between Jessica Lang as a flamboyantly moody wife and mother and Tommy Lee Jones as an army officer monitoring nuclear tests during the Cold War. The relationship is an intense combination of affection and disaffection. No! No, you get your goddamn contaminated hands off me! Charlie, you trust me. Hmm? Well, listen to me, guys. You have nothing to be afraid of. Blue Sky is so well acted by Jessica Lange and Tommy Lee Jones, it goes to the top of this weekend's hit list, along with Quiz Show and, of course, Forrest Gump. Terminal Velocity is the name of the week's uh, Big Maybe, one of the dumbest storylines in a long, long time, but redeemed by some super exciting skydiving sequences that are part of the spy plot about Russian agents. And there's a clever and comical performance by Charlie Sheen as a sky-high daredevil who just loves to take chances. I'm gonna crawl out under the wing! Are you out of your mind? Yes! Yes, I am! <laughs> and he's proud of it. Charlie Sheen alone makes terminal velocity good enough to be a maybe. Jean-Claude Van Damme does the same for Time Cop, while Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman give substance to the Shawshank Redemption, which is otherwise an overly long and only so-so prison drama. The, uh, the ones to miss this weekend, trial by jury for its unbelievable situations, a good man in Africa for its unfunny British comedy, and milk money for its contrivances and the way it sends three 12-year-old boys into the world of prostitution. It is especially inappropriate for children. The uh, two most prominent musical events this weekend give us a nice chance to catch uh, some pop sounds from two different countries, England and Mexico. Mexico's Luis Miguel, currently the number one star on the Latin charts everywhere, will be singing his heart out all weekend long, beginning tonight at the Universal Amphitheater. And original cast members of the Broadway musical called Beatlemania will be doing their sound alike best to take you back in time Saturday and Sunday at the Palace Verdes Ball Festival. She was a mm -hmm, that takes you back, doesn't it? Now, the really big news about this British bash in Palace Verdes is, guess what? It's free of charge. Not every day that happens. It is part of the UK and LA celebration, which also includes England St. Martin in the Fields uh, Symphony Orchestra. They're playing Sunday evening at the Cerrito Center for the Performing Arts. And this uh, UK and LA thing goes on all the way through November. The Royal Shakespeare Company is coming. Ooh. It's uh, There's something happening every weekend from England, yeah. All right, thank you very much, David. Oh, speaking of uh, England. Yes. The UK. Well, Lady Di showed up oh, natural in a British art gallery and Prince Charles, well, he looked a bit old fashioned. A British artist shows Charles as a smug Henry VIII, and he puts Diana in profile with her head getting cut off. But a second painting is what really has everybody talking. It shows a nude lady die as a huntress beckoning to the Archbishop of Canterbury. Diana, you see, I think I'm supporting her. Charles, I'm, I'm kind of worried about it. I'm sure he's a great guy. Well, the artist says that these paintings are a tribute. Charles' country home, by the way, is um, just down the road a bit. I doubt if he'll be doing a drop by. Perhaps a spot of tea. <laughs> he might, he might show up to see that. Well, if you drop by your local supermarket, you uh, just might see the chairman of the board. I want to be a part of it. New York, New York. Still ahead, where old Blue Eyes is making a surprise appearance of sorts. However, first the troubleshooter, Judd McElvain, shows you what to watch out for if you're getting any work done on your home. 
The Passport LX has a 175 horsepower V6 engine, on-demand four-wheel drive, a winter switch for better traction from a standing start. Oh, and one other unique feature. It's from Honda. Introducing the Honda 94 clearance lease. Just $2.99 a month for 30 months. Timing is everything at your home. It's a celebration to top all celebrations. An anniversary sale so spectacular, the furniture world has never seen anything like it. It's Wix Furniture's gigantic anniversary sale. Buying furniture in every department has been overwhelmingly reduced. Huge reductions on all bedding. Steely, Simmons, Serta, plus no monthly payments and no interest charges due for one whole year. Wix. Fine furniture, warehouse prices. For excitement, for entertainment, for recreation, for fun, dial 1-800-4-Laughlin, 1-800-4-Laughlin, for free information on the value-packed action waiting for you on the Colorado River in Laughlin, Nevada, 1-800-452-8445, for the fun of it, for Laughlin. I hereby order you to serve two life sentences back to back. The Shawshank Redemption deals with prison life, and Tim Robbins tells a horror story of being behind bars you'll only hear on Entertainment Tonight. I definitely know I don't want to be in jail, so I'm going to behave myself. Then, critics are calling Kurt Russell's Stargate the most extraordinary sci-fi flick of all time. Get your exclusive first look and Marsha Clark's chances against O.J.'s multi-million dollar defense on E.T. Tonight at 7.30 on 2. Well, as you just saw there, no matter where you go or what you look at, you can't get away from the Simpson trial, newspapers, TV, magazines. So how is Judge Lance Hito going to find an impartial jury? Michael Tuck joins us with that story and other stories he and Anna are working on at 5 o'clock. Hello, Mike. Thank you very much, Rob. How are you doing? Publicity, of course, has been overwhelming. Well, tonight at 5, we're going to give you an in-depth look at how a jury can be found despite uh, all of the, the problems in this. Newspapers, magazines, TV. So how is the judge going to find a jury? Well, okay, a spectacular show in the sky right here in the Southland, but for one man, it was a brush with death. We'll have a live report coming up. What a treat for shoppers being serenaded by the chairman of the board. <laughs> Tell you the truth, folks, I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> we got our wires crossed here. I promise you, though, we're going to have the news correctly at 5 o'clock. We hope you join us then. Sounds uh, like a plan to us, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's live TV, folks. Yeah. An L.A. building inspector is raising an alarming issue now. He thinks that the city of Los Angeles is playing fast and loose with your safety. Um, so he took his complaint to our troubleshooters, and here he is, Judge McElmey. Building people are looking at my house right now oh, as we speak. Really? Honest guys, I'm sorry about this. Mm. Now, what we have is a building inspector who thinks a lot of important work is simply slipping through the cracks, and you may pay the price. His complaint is about the L.A. City program called self-certification. What that means is that a licensed contractor who passes a special test can actually inspect and approve his own work. Nobody comes out to give a second opinion when the work is finally done. Look here, so you got your bond wires up. Yeah, and the ground wire for What the... you just need to do is make sure that they've got those secured down so no That's L.A. Building Inspector Kip Kennedy making sure that the contractor on this big job is doing things right. But he's worried that a lot of shoddy work is going unchecked. You don't trust the contractors to inspect themselves. Of course not. I was a contractor myself for nearly 18 years. I've made my own mistakes or I'd overbuild. In some cases, the inspector would tell me that wasn't necessary. Kennedy says 800 contractors are now self-certified. Under the rules, a carpenter is only allowed to self-certify carpentry work, a mason, masonry work, and so on. But Kennedy says there is now widespread abuse because general contractors are approving work in which they are not self-certified. We've already had teams go out and check, follow up on a lot of the self-certified contractors. And they've found many problems uh, either re relating to code or the actual construction itself. Steve Quellen, the general contractor on this job, thinks self-certification 
It's a terrible idea. I don't believe a lot of people try to purposely circumvent the code, but mistakes are made, and they're mis made on the drawings. Sometimes they're wrong specifications. Now that we have a construction boom after the January quake, and more than 100 inspectors have been laid off, City Inspector Kennedy thinks it's time the city dump the whole program. It is a savings, yes, but it's a life safety issue first. Now I can tell you firsthand that no contractor is perfect, no matter how good they are. I've had some people working on my house, they're really good after the quake fixing it up, but we've had to make changes to make things right. And because so many contractors are out there are so busy, it seems a little frightening that we're going to let them check their own work. They may know how to do it, but what about the subcontractor that doesn't know when the contractor tells it? Good question. Thanks. All right, Ted. Well, when you're shopping, would a bit of music get you in the mood to buy?